Welcome to the Dell Experience Lounge here in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Research Officer at the Futurum Group. I am joined today by two distinguished guests. The first is Steen Graham, CEO of Scalers AI. Welcome, Steen. Uh, and also Jeremy Johnson. Welcome, Jeremy. Howdy, howdy. Jeremy's an engineer in Dell's tech marketing. We're going to be talking about a reference implementation that Dell put together with the help of Scal Scalers AI. Uh, specifically looking at deploying AI in the manufacturing space. We're going to talk about some pretty cool stuff here. Um, Jeremy, what is an industrial digital twin? Well, uh, in a lot of digital envir or industrial environments, rather, um, you'll see full-scale mock-ups being done to do prototyping, also to test failure scenarios. So a uh, a digital twin is a way of doing this out, uh, without having to incur all the expense and uh, all the work inputs of uh, actually building something out, right, physically in the physical world. So this is, so, this is, this is, this is virtual space. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this is, this, uh, this is already happening. This, that's kind of one of the things to highlight about this uh, proof of concept, rather, is that, um, I mean, there's, there's widespread adoption of digital twins in, in the here and now. We're, training on synthetic data within this space to deploy AMRs or autonomous mobile robots. In industrial environments, obviously, there's a lot of potential for calamitous events and hazards and dangers and failures of all varieties, right? So we're training on synthetic data for the AMR to detect both chemical spills, which are you know, obviously potential hazards then also compressor failures, which can cause a huge amount of fallout and incredible expense for, in this case, the oil and gas industry. Take synthetic data, train in a virtual digital twin, and then deploy that to the real world. The scale of what we're doing here is what's quite unique because we're doing a you know a full facility level scale. But you know, phase one, you know, you're really creating um, this physical environment uh, replica. You know, and that's you know kind of your metaverse or your omniverse-based implementation, and in that phase, you're 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 trying to recreate the actual facility all the way to the down to the physics-based models that are deployed uh, in that facility, and um, then you know you're trying to create you know all the scenarios that would naturally occur within that facility to train the robot, and so you're creating all these synthetic data and synthetic events across you know, a modality of you know, challenges like chemical spills that, as, as we all know, the number one you know, goal in any manufacturing environment is to keep the employees safe. You don't deploy robots in the physical world without advanced training of the environments that they're going to go into. And then also using computer vision technologies to create these events these hazardous events, you know, artificially, because you know, we don't want to spill chemicals in the real world. The other piece of it is like when you're in production, now we've got a production environment that drives massive levels of productivity where, you know, the employees that may actually have to be on site can now be at home managing that robot, you know, remotely, understanding all of the elements of the digital twin. What's uniquely different is that, you know, full scale simulation environment, the training of robotics, running AI on synthetic data, and then production grade deployment of digital twins that gives you all the real time insights on what's happening in your facility. You can do all of this without or like pre-deployment, I think is the, okay. that's the, I mean, that's the big takeaway. The, the more you can upstream, you know, into, into this metaverse environment, you know, simulate and validate, especially when you, you talk about some of the harshest conditions, you know, on earth. And this is a reference implementation that is available and usable and adaptable, something that people can actually take advantage of. You know, the, reference, the reference code is, uh, you know, will be published on the Dell GitHub repo, and um, people can think about how to recreate their, their environment with this, uh, this reference. I mean, the, the physical world is a very unique space, so you know, to the extent that you want to recreate physical world spaces, you need to look at this as a template to guide you through this journey. But a lot of people are intimidated by, you know, just step by step, how do you get a digital asset? How do you start with the right digital assets? How do you, how do you simulate the environment, you know, using something like Isaac, you know, simulation? You know, how do we uh, deploy AI, you know, and synthetic data and run AI on synthetic data to create accurate models? One of the big modalities is video. 
right? And of course, you know, what we're doing uniquely here is we're running a lot of distributed video workloads at the edge because that there's a camera intake, you know, from those AMRs, and that's that's where Ethernet's coming into play too as well. We're taking you, guiding you step by step for that process. Um, but yeah, you're you're not going to be able to deploy an, an AMR in your manufacturing facility from day one, but you will dramatically reduce the the, the time to do that and at least overcome some of the the early challenges at, you know, at the forefront of innovation we are in this, in this technology stack. So Jeremy, coming into this, um, you know, we all come in with expectations. Anything, anything surprise you or? I think adding the AMR and, uh, show, and showcasing all of the uh, AI technology kind of just makes it a lot more compelling and just kind of fascinating. And especially um, mm -hmm. Scalers is, is, I mean, they're full blown ISV and they were able to bring together all the middleware components, everything. So there's a, I mean, I would encourage people to go and look at the GitHub and mess around with this themselves. It's all there to, to see and tinker around with. So it's, it's really awesome and extremely useful technology. So That's you think the, it's going to become more accessible over time and more people will, will embrace this? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if you could do something today, as, as Jeremy alluded to, one of the hidden gems of this work is the, uh, the validation of the OPCOA northbound protocol, which is a great way to get all your field data, all your industrial manufacturing field data into a PowerEdge class device and start to create that digital twin. So you've got real world insights on your facility or set of facilities. And then you know, that can unlock a whole ton of innovation. But you know, what's really you know, different about this is actually you know, observing what's going on in the physical world via digital twins, great but actually transforming the safety of the environment and improving the uptime is really critical. So if we can make our workers safer and then we can drive top line revenue, you know, that's, that's really what's unique. And that's, that's where the robots come to play and um, you know, we can deploy them to drive that innovation. Thank you gentlemen so much. Uh, from the beautiful Dell Experience Lounge here in Round Rock, Texas. Sadly, I just got word that my digital twin took out a home equity line of credit against my home and lost all the money in Vegas. Dave Nicholson here from Futurum <laughs> Group. Hope to see you again soon.